Um, God bless anybody who's watching this. Jesus loves you, okay? And I love you, okay? Thank you so much for supporting me, no matter who you are. If you what is going on guys? Alex Hubink here coming at you with another YouTube video. So this is going to be something that is very different. And uh, I've been thinking about doing one of these videos for uh, a while now. Basically, I don't know if you've ever seen like YouTube in the past, like Draw My Life, a lot of content creators would do. I can't do that, but I want to kind of tell you guys about who I am as a person, who, who is Alex Hubink right um, now I know there's a lot of other fitness influencers and now you may follow them and you may kind of relate to them a little bit but you only see their social media side of things which is usually everybody's best self at their best self right so I I want to I want to change up the industry obviously I've already been trying to change up the fitness industry um, but I, I want to be real with you guys and I want to tell you guys about my life the experiences that I've, I've went through to kind of get to the position where I am now as a 21 year old male adult and um you know, hope, I hope to inspire and to uh, help a lot of other of the younger generation. Maybe uh, through my experiences, if you were to listen through this whole video, you might learn something that um, you don't have to go through a uh, a kind of tragic experience to learn to get that uh, that that thing you would learn from having that experience. Maybe you'll learn something from this video. And my goal is to inspire, especially the youth and um, the coming up generation. So. Uh, again, if you're a good follower of mine, or if you look up to me in any type of way, uh, and you want to watch this video, thank you for that, because obviously this is different than my other fitness content, but um, we're going to get into it. I'm going to basically do like a, uh, who is Alex Eubank? All right, to start things off, I guess I'll go with like my, my childhood, I guess. So uh, I was born uh, outside of Baltimore, Maryland, um, in a nice suburban neighborhood, you know, never struggled or anything growing up. I grew up as an only child as well. Um, my parents did not get along growing up. You know, I used to wake up in the middle of the night having to deal with them arguing, stuff like that. I'm sure a lot of people can can relate to that in that sense of dealing with, with uh, issues like that in their family, you know. And um, they, they obviously got a divorce and it was it was a long divorce. So like it was it was a nasty it was like a di regular divorce and then like a really bad one. It was a really bad one, right? So it was really rough on me, especially being an only child and I didn't really have anyone there for me. I remember I used to have to go to my teachers in elementary school to talk to because I didn't know what was going on. Um, so it was really rough and it lasted all the way through middle school from fourth grade to pretty much to ninth grade when it was official. Um, so that was rough, yeah. Um, going through middle school, I was always a kid who was trying to fit in. Middle school really wasn't that eventful, I'm not even going to say. Like I was just, just living as a middle schooler. High school is when things started really to kind of change up. Um, I was always like and kind of like an outcast in high school. It was like I didn't I, I was in multiple friend groups here and there But I wasn't solidified in one friend group So like if that friend group was going to do a big event I would be the last person to get invited or I would not get invited. Okay. I never went to parties in high school I did not drink. I did not smoke. I did not do anything The majority of high schoolers even some of you guys probably follow me probably do and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that even though the kind of is but, but um, I'll get to that later in the video explaining um, how you could better be utilizing your time, especially getting a jump start in your life as a young person if you don't kind of let these things influence your life at the point where you're most vulnerable. See, like I said, I definitely was more of a loner in a sense. It was like I went to school, went home. Um, I started working when I was 16, so before that, it was just went to school, went home, played a bunch of video games. I was the biggest gamer. I played hours, four to five hours. I used to wake up before school, an uh, hour or two before school just so I could play for a little bit before I went to school. First person shooter guy, you know, so Call of Duty, Halo, Rainbow Six Siege, more recently, all that stuff um, is what I was really big into. Uh, sophomore year of high school, I had my first, second after the divorce, tragic event that really started to shape my life, which actually kind of led to me going into lifting weights. So sophomore year, the first girl I really was starting to get feelings for, you know how you're in high school, you know, you're getting through your teenage years and you start, you know, um, relationships more start to develop. And uh, I was like the first girl I would say that I really had like feelings for in that sense. And she had feelings, you know, in return. Uh, what is crazy long long story short short she she got very sick she got very sick she had a uh, uh, seizure and became like her brain you know what I mean like she was on uh, life support and she passed her name was Cashin this was March 16th of 2016 okay so I was 16 when I started lifting so that's that's, that's uh, kind of what pushed me to do it after that I had awful anger issues man I was anything would light me off I was always trying to get into fights um, it, I just had a, a weird mental state that I didn't understand at the time, but it was uh, taking hold of me in that in that sense. So I got into calisthenics. All uh, these guys called Bar Brothers. I like bought their program. They're like all body weight only. I thought they looked cool. I loved like the movements they did. So I got into calisthenics for about four to five months. Got really lean off of it. 
And then that's when I started going to the gym. And in the gym, I would still do mainly calisthenic stuff. But then slowly over time, I started getting on my like, Instagram, my explore page, like bodybuilders. Oh, I want to get bigger. So I started going into lifting weights a little bit more. And I could tell I had pretty good genetics at the start. I, uh, I definitely was building size quick. And um, throughout high school, I started after that, you know, being 16, like junior year and senior year, I was known in school as being like the bigger, like the muscle guy. Like they used to like, call me like protein muscles, all this stuff like that, like stupid nicknames, whatever. And I was known for being that big bulky guy. I wasn't aesthetic yet. I was, I was building my foundations. So I was like 190 pounds. But uh, I'd say like junior and soft, or, uh, junior and senior year was when I really started struggling more mentally, or started getting that ask, that uh, that issue of, of feeling like I, I wasn't belonging anywhere specifically. And because I didn't have like any best friends, I didn't have like that best friend. Like a lot of people have like a best friend or a really good best friend group. Uh, I didn't have that. So instead of doing that, I devoted my time into women. And like not in the aspect of like bad in a bad sense. It was I was always dating. A girl like I date a girl and if I broke up with her a month later I'd be dating somebody new and I feel like looking back on that now reflecting on it I always needed companionship I always needed you know because I was the only child I had no one there it was like I needed that so it was like I go to school go home hang out with a girlfriend go to the gym go home play Xbox all night repeat the process and I it, it was weird living that life but I was content with it doing that same thing over and over again um but I always still felt like I was missing something and uh, only like senior year later it got even worse I you know I started having issues more with the anxiety the depression was hitting me. Uh, my anxiety was so bad that I used to get sick every morning almost before school. Then uh, we go into my freshman year of college. I went to a community college. And um, I remember I got like my heart broken really bad around this time. So I was down bad in that sense. Um, I threw up. I got very sick my uh, my senior year graduation of high school right before my freshman year. And I lost 20 pounds over that summer, not trying to. I wasn't able to eat. My anxiety got to a point that it was so bad that I had this thing called derealization. And it was the scariest thing ever. I would basically force myself into panic attacks out of nowhere. I wasn't able to eat. I was scared to eat because I would convince myself I was gonna get sick if I ate. That's why I lost so much weight. And it was it was a really hard mental battle and I was so down bad. And this is also part of the time if you've seen my, um, how I came to Christ. You are my is I made these recordings on my phone from like senior year, junior year, up to my freshman year of college, where I talk about how bad my anxiety and depression was and how I wanted to almost off this. You know what I mean? I wanted to just end it all, you know? And um, it was a really difficult time in my life. And I'm very happy I was able to pull through it. Thank, thank you know, thanks to God. And um, I'd say my freshman year of college is when I really started having a relationship with God and getting a drawing to him. I always grew up in a Christian family, but I never had a personal relationship with God. There's a difference between difference between being a Christian and just going to church, you know, once a month versus like having a relationship with Christ. You can get so like, this is like the playing field. It's like, you can be like this. It's like typical Christian. Oh, I'm a Christian, but you live like everybody else. And then you can go deep with it. And that's where you find like the peace and the love. And you see like, somebody whose whole life is falling apart but they're still okay and they're smiling because they have christ you know what i mean like that's a, it's a different type of relationship um and it's it's a great feeling and a great experience and a feeling of comfort so i started getting close to god i started getting into worship music playing singing uh worship music like on guitar and that's really what brought me closer to god because that's when i would feel like the spirit working within me So I could tell that as I was getting closer to God, it was like my anxiety, depression, and panic attacks started drifting away. And I did, was on medication for a minute. I had to go to a therapist, I was on medication, and I honestly feel like it was making it worse. So I just one day hopped off all my medication and was, was trying to get better. And I say that, you know, God really helped heal me. And so um, uh, 20, uh, 2019, I'm pretty sure the winter of 2019 is when I first started making uh, a few YouTube videos. It was kind of like a way to cope. You know, the man, my, my boss at the time was telling me I should make videos, post them on social media a little bit. I was like, cool, why not? So I had like a GoPro at the time. I was recording videos in my home gym. Um, and then 2020, January 5th is when I got baptized. And that's when I decided that that year that, um, that I was gonna do this. I'll pop up a clip actually I have on my YouTube channel. I'm not trying to be no ordinary person. I want to, you know, be good. I want to be known for muscular I want to be known for I want to make money I want to be good so this is gonna be a big year I'm feeling it this year 2020 get baptized tomorrow start off the new year right closer to God get this YouTube channel going on like right before the day I got baptized where I say how this was gonna be a big year for me 2020 was the year that changed my life entirely and I said it in that literally the beginning of the year right before I got baptized 
and uh, I, it was right. It did my my whole life changed that year. <laughs> <laughs> the reach is unfair. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, dude. Come on. So I'd say from uh, January like to the spring, you know, I was bulked up a bit. I was really, this is when COVID was hitting. I wasn't taking like the YouTube thing super seriously, but I was consistently putting out videos, I'd say at least once, uh, one video a week. Uh, I didn't really have a rhythm with it. I, I don't think I was on TikTok yet. I think I started TikTok around uh, right when summer started of 2020. Um, throughout this time, again, I was, I was dealing with women um, trying to be in relationships, and I was a... I was a simp at the time, bro, and because I was a simp, I got my heart broke, and I had no confidence. I was a simp, and I had no confidence, so it was just heartbreak after heartbreak, and um, it made me get into a really dark place where I went from the closest I've ever been to God in my entire life to where these girls kept individually breaking me more and more. I kept trusting people with like feelings and, and um, being vulnerable just to get broken, so it brought me down bad, and I'm not going to lie. I got really far from God for a time when I started doing the social media stuff. Uh, I dropped out of school, quit my job um, July. The end of July of 2020, when I only had 2,500 followers on my Instagram, probably like 60k, if that, on my TikTok. I don't even think I had that much, and I don't advise doing that. But I knew. I remember I opened up a document for my for my college at the time. I was a junior year, transferred into school. Opened up a document. It was like an exam. It wasn't. It was like a project. I looked at it for one second. I said, "Nope, I'm not doing it." I exited out of it. And I didn't even withdraw my classes. I I absolutely hate school. This is this is for another video. I'll go into my whole topic on what I think about the school system and how it's setting kids up for failure. But other than that, um, I realized that I wanted to do what I wanted to do in life and I wanted to be happy doing what I liked and loved doing, which everybody should strive for. And I knew that wouldn't be working a nine to five job for somebody else. So I said, I don't need the schooling. I'm going to make a career out of this stuff I'm gonna be doing for social media. When I had 2,500 followers, I was making zero money. And now I'm doing it as a, as a real job and I make decent money and I love doing it. And I'm, I'm only going to go up with this. I plan to open up a gym. I plan to do so many things down the road. And um, But that's for another story. So yeah, I was heartbroken. I was getting farther from God. And then I always, I always kept trying to have my calling towards him. And then I started kind of getting back into it. I started implementing it into my content again. Started getting closer to God. Um, and that started kind of se separating me from other influencers in the fitness industry was how open I was with my Christianity. And the reason why I was so open w with it was because I probably would not be here if it wasn't for that. And because I know how much it's done for me, I know that I could do that for other people. So obviously I'm going to want to push it on people in a, in a positive way, not forcing it, but it's kind of like showing you like, this is this for me. This helped me with this. It could probably do the same thing for you, you know? And uh, helping people, that's what I'm supposed to do as a Christian, spread the word, spread the, you know, spread the good news. I got sponsored by Rise First. I probably only had like 12K followers. I'm gonna say this was in maybe October. I'll have to find a specific date, maybe pop up a DM or something. I know for a fact, I'm pretty sure I got sponsored by Raw Gear though in November. I remember I woke up one morning, saw a DM by Bradley Martin, I was like, no way. And this was before they started signing like any other Raw Gear athletes. I was one of the first like new guys on the team. So I was like really excited for it. And uh, that that really changed my, I was like, okay, this is, I'm doing this now. Um, I remember October 31st, I had 18K on Instagram. I always made these set these little goals. Well, I'll get in the end of this video, I'll give you some tips if you want life advice and stuff like that. But anyways, picked up by, by Raw Gear and I was on Rise and Raw Gear and I was like, that's when I started thinking like, oh my, like this is this is working, like I'm making this a career. Uh, I still wasn't making that much money. Um, and then uh, I'd say I started really dramatically growing. It really started exponentially growing. I uh, started becoming like a really good seller for Rise and Raw Gear. Um, I started making moves. We had the plans for the uh, Rise House, which we did uh, in t early uh, earlier this year. And um, I remember I had like a fear of traveling and flying. And I remember back in December or like early January, I had to fly up to Dallas for the first time by myself. Almost had a panic attack on the plane. I still have issues with flying. I hate it. But the fact that I went from like literally like not being able to leave my house because of how bad my anxiety was limiting me to flying to Dallas by myself, even after that, having to fly to LA to go stay with Brad for a week at a time, like like in January, February, when I first went out to LA, is insane to me. The amount of personal, individual growth that I've went through the last two years is phenomenal. It's phenomenal. I don't know how, only but through through God, just kind of working with him and me praying and asking him to help me when I needed him. But yeah, so I ended up meeting Brad. When I was with Brad, I witnessed him. I told him about God. I told him about religion and stuff like that. Same thing when I met David Lee. I did the same thing with him. I talked to them for at least an hour minimum, both of them, about Christianity and like what it's done for me, um, the logic behind it, like, you know, like the actual intellectual aspect of it. Because I'm not a blind believer in faith. I'm a very logical, logically based person. So um, that was really big for me, like meeting Brad, being, you know, getting closer to him, being, it was like I was friends with him. And I feel like I'm going to see him 
Sunday, which is today's Friday when I'm filming this. So I'm about to go out to LA for the week. So expect a bunch of cool content as well. Yeah, and then, and then the, I, I'm here now. It's, you know, this has been a great year so far, 2021. You know, we hit, uh, we're at 113K, I think, on Instagram. And uh, another reason, honestly, why I'm making this YouTube video is because I want this for the future, for, for me to look back on and reflect on and to see the type of person I was then and then compare it to where I am at that point in the future. Because I have so many you know, goals for, to try to be a very successful um, person, especially at a younger age, and uh, I hope I can do that. So it'd be cool to look back on this video. So I'm not just doing this video to show you guys the person I am. I wanna, I wanna you know, you this as like a little time capsule to see uh, how I get to um, what I'm like in the future, you know? But any anyways, I am here where I am now. I would say um, humbly that I am at least maybe like the top 10 trending uh, fitness influencers, I would say. Uh, throughout 2021 so far. Um, I'm trying to be humble about that. I, w I think that's a, a decent point, I would I would think. <laughs> but, um, and I'm hoping to be, you know, top three within the end of the year and stuff like that. And I'm really trying to work hard as I can to um, to be able to do that and provide and uh, provide a lot of good content and be entertaining and stuff like that. I have plans to, um, I, go, I guess I'll tell you guys, I have plans probably to move to Austin later this year. I know Brad's has a, has a gym that he's going to be getting out there and I want to help out with the area and I want to, you know, really make this thing like a full-time like it's already a full-time thing but i want to like be in an environment where it's like la but it's not la i don't want to go to i don't want to move to la if i can move to austin have that zoo culture environment collab with a bunch of people and make fun content in a, in a cool city like austin I, I would do it so i told brad i'm down to move in with him if he's moving out to la i mean moving out to austin and, and a bunch of other stuff yeah so that's my life you know i've come from a uh i've i've definitely been blessed i've been very blessed at it I was very lucky, I would say. Um, I did have my fair share of very rough battles when it came to, let's just say, heartbreak, being alone, depression, anxiety, all hitting me, loss to that girl, you know what I mean? There's just anger issues, all this, literally everything coming together. And, and the biggest thing was, no matter what bad things I was going through, I never turned to drugs, I never turned to drinking, I never turned to sex, I never turned to partying. I always tried to keep my morals as a... Uh, as I obviously I'm not I'm not perfect at all and I, I never will say I'm perfect but I always tried to keep a foundation of morals and because I did that I always felt so different and separated from everybody else and I feel like that's exactly what has brought me to the position that I am in today is me being different than everybody else so if you're if you're different you don't fit in uh, like for me if I stand out and if I'm in the mall if I'm at a restaurant or a diner I can't like have a t good time i look around and i'm like i'm looking at all these people and i'm just like i see people drinking like i went to a college town the other night to drop my drop my friend off somewhere and i see all these like kids who are just drinking and with girls and all these guys it's just they look like I'm like you're wasting your life like you're just you're doing this for what um highly recommend reading this book actually and it'll explain a lot of that uh, I used to have a bunch of these thoughts, thoughts in my head about society and how people were, how, why I felt different and stuff until I read this book. Uh, it's called Outwitting the Devil by uh, Napoleon Hill. And this pretty much like confirmed every single thought that I had about society and basically talks about like people being controlled by a negative force and it kind of can make causes them to drift through society. So I feel like I wasn't drifting through society. So I feel like that's because I have a certain type of thinking process that's different than your typical person. And that's because I am different. I always felt different because of that. So I know I have a bunch of younger followers and uh, if there's anything I can uh, give you guys advice on and tell you guys, cause I know I have a bunch of kids who are like always wanting to do what I'm doing, you know, trying to be a fitness influencer or they want to start doing content. First tip, you cannot care what anybody thinks about what you are trying to do, okay? I did not care. I unfollowed literally like everybody from my hometown of my high school because I knew that they were not friends. I didn't have friends like that. They were people I maybe had classes with, but, and I knew they, some people even talked trash behind my back when I started trying to make content because I look like an idiot when I had like two followers and I'm vlogging with cameras and stuff like that. You cannot care what people think about you. This is your life. This is your world. Make the best out of it. If you care about what other people are, are th going to think of you, it's going to limit you from doing things. So might as well do them, do those things because one day you're gonna regret it if you don't do it. So stop being scared to post your physique on your Instagram, make your account into a fitness account. And if people start giving you hate, like who cares? Like who cares what somebody else's opinion is? If it's not, this is how I see it. I care about what God thinks about me and I care about what my parents think about me. And I care honestly about what the, the people who follow me think about me, but you probably shouldn't care about that. But the people who follow me, I'm very, I very care about, I care about that a lot because I want to be a very good role model and influence for a lot of these kids and these younger guys. I know there's a lot of other influencers uh, that, I, that I've seen throughout the fitness industry who um, may not be the best influence as a, as a role model. The, they're definitely great influences in the fitness industry all around for people when it comes to looking up to for, you know, going to the gym, have the motivation for that. But when it comes to being a good, good moral person 
that has good values, I want to be one of the best that there could possibly be with that. And that's why I'm very good, like trying to be very intuitive on religion. And I've seen, I've had so many DMs. I have a wall filled in my basement, literally, of just DMs from that you guys have sent me, telling me how I've helped your life when it comes to faith or uh, fitness. I've even saved some kids' lives because they had the same issues with anxiety and depression. If you've not seen my testimony, you can see how bad mine was. And people love when I post that because I, I'm very vulnerable with you guys. That's that's partly what this video is. I'm being vulnerable um, because like, I want you guys to know about Alex Eubank not just what you see on my Instagram and me doing a vacuum. You know what I mean? Like, I want you to know the type of person that I am. And if you want to support me, um, it's because you know the person I am. You're supporting this guy, not the guy you see on social media. Second tip when it comes, I guess what I can just teach you is to to find a goal and to literally like pick a goal. Like you need to choose what you want in your life. There's so many kids who are in college right now, who have, you ask them, they have no idea what they want to do in life. They have no idea what they want to do for a job. They're doing they're like a major or like a bachelor's degree. They don't know what they, do, they want to do specifically. Find what you are passionate about, and I bet that's not a nine to five job. Find what you are passionate about and find a way, a plan of action to pursue that. And no matter how many times you might see like you're failing, screw it, just keep going at it. Because if you if you give up when you fail, you did it all for nothing. The only people who, who really will reach success in life are those who learn from those failures and they keep going after those failures, all right? So find what you want in life, have a plan of action for your entire life. Have a set goal. Don't just be wandering through life, being like, oh, it'll come to me eventually. Find what you're passionate about, make a plan, and pursue it no matter what. Third thing is gonna be never to forget where you came from. One of the biggest things I try to do is I try to stay as humble as I possibly can. Given any amount of fame, followers, money, whatever thing I get, I want to be known for being like, he's like, I want people to tell me that I was a good man, I was a humble man, and I was one who motivated kids to be good people in life not just motivated them to get shredded and stuff like that. I want them to be good people in life, to be good people. That's the issue with our generation we have is these people in our generation are turning into just straight up, they, they believe that they're their own God almost in a sense. They have so much pride and they're not humble at all and they, they, they don't have any compassion for anybody else. So it's a big issue in our society. I feel like it's getting worse every year and I want to be able to help fight against that and change that. Um, so I think that was three things, right? Three tips I could give, I guess, when it comes to... Uh, helping out guys also fourth thing okay we'll just say don't waste your time in women sex okay drinking smoking partying don't waste your time in that stuff okay it's good to have maybe in moderation but do not let it consume you don't let it become a weekly thing i recommend especially if while you're young take this time while you can to take risks to find what you want to do in your life and you can take you can literally like you can invest all your money you get in the, in the stock market and crypto at such a young age and you, even if you lose all your money you're not gonna lose anything because you're still a kid okay take this time to get a head start on everybody else while they have no idea what they're gonna do in life capitalize off of that okay all right, so that's gonna be it for today's video uh, obviously it's gonna be a little bit of a longer one and if you stayed and watched the whole thing through God bless you thank you thank you so much for being uh, someone who cared about me I guess enough to say this video so God bless you um, God bless anybody who's watching this. Jesus loves you, okay? And I love you, okay? Thank you so much for supporting me, no matter who you are. If you support me anyway, use my codes on anything, bought my programs, merch, or anything, thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart because you allow me to be in this position where I am now, and I could not do it without you. So thank you so much. God bless each and every one of you guys. Uh, we got a bunch. I'm going to LA on Sunday, so have a bunch of content there. I got my video guy with me, so expect a bunch of content with Brad and stuff like that. But thank you guys. Love you guys. See you guys. Yeah.